Number four, find the following for path D in figure 2.59, the distance traveled. All right, so letter A, let's write that down here. So let's go to, uh, on the graph, let's go to path D. Here it is. And um, we have to calculate the distance, right? Uh, so remember in uh, this problem here, the distance, okay, is simply um, defined as, right, the amount, the amount of ground covered by a moving object, okay? So let's see. Let's start, uh, not let's start, but the object starts right here. Right, and it looks like it starts right at a displacement of nine. Okay, then it's gonna travel this way. And it looks like it travels to this location here, right, which has a displacement of three, until it turns back around and finally stops at what appears to be a displacement of five here. Okay, so if we had to calculate the distance, we have to calculate the total amount of ground covered. Okay, including, uh, it's not just a start and end point, we have to consider if we turn back around, we have to add that to the total distance. So I can break this up into two pieces, essentially. I'll break uh, this problem up into, part one will be from the, the start point to the turnaround point. I'll label that as part A. And then part B will be from the turnaround point to the end, which that'll be, I'll put a little dot there, part B, okay? So the distance, I'll just um, abbreviate as D, would be the um, distance traveled in part A plus the distance traveled in part B. Okay, so the what's the distance traveled in part A? Well, they started at um, nine and they went to three. So if I take the difference, I'll find the total distance. And then what's the distance in part B? Well, part B essentially started at three and ended at five. So if I simply take the difference, I'll find the distance. Now, I put the larger value first for both because I'm not interested in the sign. I want the positive value, I want the absolute value. Um, so, uh, because that's how we, that's what we need to do in order to calculate distance, the total ground covered. So nine minus three is simply six. This is all in meters, right? Five minus three is two. So the total distance covered here uh, for path D is going to be eight meters. Great, letter A is done. Let's move on to letter B. Okay, so now let's just erase the little notes there on the picture, and let's go back to the picture. So remember, the uh, part B wants to calculate the magnitude of the displacement from start to finish. So recall the formula. That the, that the change in displacement is equal to the final displacement value minus the initial displacement value. Since we're just concerned about the magnitude, we can take the absolute value of this because we don't care about the sign. So we're starting at nine and we're ending at five. So let's plug in those numbers. So the final displacement value is five meters. The initial was uh, nine meters. And I'm going to take the absolute value, right? So when I do the math here, uh, right, five minus nine is negative four. And when I take the absolute value, the negative just becomes a positive. So it becomes four meters. Great, so that's part B. And now uh, we can do part C, right? Part C is now asking to find the displacement. So they're, they want to consider sine. So now we have the same formula. Um, though we just get rid of the absolute value because we are concerned about the sign now. So we just plug in the same numbers. The final displacement value was five meters. The initial was uh, nine meters. So when I take the difference, it comes out to be, oh, I forgot the X there. The difference comes out to be negative four meters. And that would be the answer to part C. So thank you guys for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe and I will see you soon.